Last week uh, we had Henley Business School in to tell us what uh, Henley does and the Dean came in. I didn't know how to behave so I behaved uh, well and properly. Uh, today, however, this is our second meeting so uh, John Foster Pedley, Dean and Director of Henley Business School Africa, thank you once again for joining us. Thanks, Tom. I didn't know how to behave either. So really? Yeah, well, you it. did cool. remarkably well. <laughs> you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, 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 Lee, uh, our holy wolf wolf uh, producer, said that uh, we need John in to give us a couple of uh, insights on a Monday mm. morning. And that's what we do in this hour, actually. We speak to Graham Codrington, who's a futurist. Mm. We speak to Douglas Kruger, who mm. sharpens businesses up. And now we chat to you as well. Great. We're lucky. We're very lucky. <laughs> Thank you. That's the other way around. What have you got for us this morning? Well, I, I had my sister-in-law came up from Cape Town the weekend. It just, it just really hit me how serious that water crisis is down there. Yes. I mean, we don't see so much of it here in Joburg, mm. but it's really affecting people. And it's part of what we may see with changing in climate patterns. So we're going to see significant changes in infrastructure. And are we spending money on it? Mm. What happens if they run out of water? I mean, people are going up to that stream that comes off Table Mountain and they're banning people taking water out the stream now because somebody took 400 liters out of it. it you know, they, uh, we were chatting uh, last week, Clem Sunter joined us on the line. Mm. Premier Helen Ziller joined us mm. on the line. We spoke to a number of people out of the Cape last week, all of them with the same, uh, the same worry that mm. the taps run dry. I mean, literally run dry. And then what does the city do? And can you imagine? And, it's and we, had, we had the issues up in the, in, in the northwest earlier on this year. So I think we're facing infrastructural challenges mm. that we talked about historically. Oh, that's going to come sometime in the future. But now it's right on top of mm. us. What are we going to do about it? Mm. So that's my first issue. Okay. I, I don't have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's partly about being prepared. I think we've got to start talking. I mean, the other thing that's happening in the world that's significant now, you're starting to see less partisanship. You're starting to see the DA and mm, the DA Caring working. about issues, yes. Yeah, and you're seeing that international. I think there's a political change worldwide now where we're starting to talk about global governance. How do we get together to deal with the big issues? And you're going to start to see our kids and ourselves having to work in different ways going in the future. I, I, um, I hesitate to say this, but I'm going to. I think we're very wasteful people, South Africans. Um, uh, you know, we've left our recycling uh, duties up to the guys on the streets. That's mm. why we've got these recyclers, because we don't recycle. We've created a demand for them to do it. Uh, we, so we're not recycling the way we should be. We're, we're wasteful when it comes to water. They're too, you know, and I've had this conversation around various dinner tables in, in upmarket suburbs and downmarket mm. suburbs. Mm. And you'll be surprised when you say who switches the tap off when they brush their teeth. And only half. You know, the, the other half, we leave, the, let the water run. And, and just for so many years, water has been something that comes out the tap in this country. We'd, we've never really worried about it. It hasn't been expensive and it hasn't been scarce. Why should you? I mean, I just came back from England. You turn on the tap, you look, look at the rain's coming out of the sky. Yes. You wouldn't think about it. Uh. But these days, you've got to think so much more carefully about it. I mean, there's the sort of short-term welfare issues and, and energy issues you can do about changing mm. your patterns of behavior in your in your house but then you've got to look at what happens in production cycles you're starting to see the nile running dry you know, and mm. significant rivers mm. not reaching the sea because so much is taken for agriculture upstream yeah. and that's making significant changes to our environment and the ecology so we can do two things one we can get to understand how business as a whole can get to be more you know environmentally savvy mm. and you can also work out how your own patterns can can change and it's quite a good discipline have you tried have you have you have you started yeah yeah i've, tr I've tried we've got we've got bins bins in, the, in the kitchen bins, yes you? but you know we keep forgetting which label is which I, this is the problem i've got <laughs> so i went and, and bought uh, the checkers um bags you know yeah. instead of the plastic packets those 20 odd rand bags i bought mm. two of them and then i also go to pick and pay so i bought two pick and pay bags I keep walking into the shop and forgetting my bags. <laughs> and then I, I'm so hard on myself. I, I feel like a failure as I walk in. I think I can't. I turn around and go get the bags. <laughs> That's the one thing I've done. Uh, and, the, and then the other is try not to waste water. Uh, the, the, and, and then yesterday, and I wanted to bring this into the discussion, uh, I was impressed with um, Nespresso. Mm. They've got a shop in Sandton City. And a friend of mine said, yesterday I had to go to a charity function on Mandela Square, and he kindly said he'll pick me up, a guy by the name of Justin. And on the way into Sandon City, he said, Tom, uh, would you mind if I stop at the Nespresso shop? I need to recycle my whatever those little containers are. Mm. And I didn't know they were doing it. And do you, you know when you walk into the Nespresso shop, the first thing they ask you is, do you have any containers to recycle? It's part of their... 
it's part of their hello, so how may I help you? Yeah, and, and that's a discipline that we really starting to have to mm. get. That's happening mm. at schools. It needs to be part of the way we think. And you know what? It's actually really quite fun, you know, when you start yes. thinking about how can I use water more efficiently. It's a good discipline that feeds into business. How do you use resources more efficiently? And I think you're right. I think there is a history of wastefulness because there's been so much um, available for, admittedly, a very few people. Yeah. So when you start looking at township development, the rural communities, you start thinking, how can we develop new technologies that will make life simpler for them. And so the recycling disciplines, the, the, the alternative energy disciplines, are very important things for us to get our head around coming forward now. I, I, I was never really disciplined when it came to the, these kind of issues, but then you know I got to a stage where I realized I had to play my part. And the interesting thing is the, the more you get involved, the more fun it becomes. Yeah, I mean, I had a, an alternative youth, you know, part of what I did was I worked on mushroom farms and I worked as a gardener and many things in my early 20s. Don't get me started like on mushroom farm. I'm obsessed with mushroom <laughs> farming. I'm as, obsessed with talking to you for hours about mushroom Well, it was farming. fantastic fun. And then I started learning about composting and doing those things. Yes. And, um, and that's really interesting work. Mm. I have two nephews who are working in permaculture and organic farming, wow. one in New Zealand and one in, one in Canada. And the, the uh, interest they get out of, out of life and understanding how soil works and how, how to make better environments is, is uh, it's fascinating to see. So I think that's something else we can do. You know, not take nature for granted. Get a really good understanding mm. of how it's composed mm. and how we can interact with it, not just in the bush, but just what's right in front of you in your garden. You know, what's, what's happening right there in your window box almost. You can get yeah. a, a deeper understanding of life just by doing that. Couldn't agree more. What other issues are you bringing to the table this morning? Well, it's a business issue that I think that's been, you know, hammering in my head for a while. It's just trying to, I've, I've been trying to understand the difference between sales and marketing. Now, this is bizarre because I've worked in those fields most of my life yes. and taught them. But I'm starting to think there's, there's really not much difference between sales and marketing. There's a huge convergence now, especially in the digital world. We don't have the salesmen hammering on doors and marketing people sitting in sort of ivory towers playing. Yes. Everyone's working together around the same thing. And especially now, I think that selling has become much more about subject matter expertise. People don't really want to have a hard sell and somebody trying to bend around to buy something, but we all want to listen to solutions and ideas, and we're smart now. We've got plenty of understanding of, of how things work. We want good solution providers who will help us think through the challenges we're facing, and they're much more important to us, I think, than the old school salesman. And so the convergence between sales and marketing is becoming more and more pronounced. So as we start training and educating people to be in sales or in marketing, we tend to focus on the marketing aspects. But to be really effective in getting your product you need to out sell there, it. Yeah. you've got to sell it. <laughs> but there are disciplines in, doing that in, disciplines in doing that that require people to really, really, really know stuff. Mm. And that's what you and I want to engage with when we're trying yeah. to buy a product, especially as you can buy so much online now. And that content matter expertise online is also critically important. John Foster Pedley, the Dean and Director of Henley Business School, joins us in studio this morning. I've got a, I, here I've got something for you, John. Mm -hmm. uh, you were talking about the lines between sales and marketing being blurred, mm -hmm. and I actually saved a, a, a screenshot from my Facebook page just yesterday. And it's funny, I didn't know when I was going to use it, but I'm going to use it now. How about that? How's that? Um, it's the Lindhurst Super Spa. I don't know where Lindhurst Super Spa is, I, I assume in Johannesburg mm -hmm. somewhere. And, you know, I watch people um, on Facebook all the time and businesses trying to get their message across. And very often it just gets lost in the noise. And here, I don't know who this was, whether this was the salesperson or the marketing person or the person in charge of the fruit and veg section. It might have just been the person in charge <laughs> of the fruit and veg section, right? That guy arrives, They've got right. potatoes on special for a, a particularly low price. And all they did was they took a picture of a whole bunch of pockets of potatoes and the price and they put it on their Facebook page. Do you know how many comments they got underneath there? Hundreds and hundreds. Please keep 10 bags for me. I'm on my way. And sometimes it's just the obvious stuff, like the old advert with the unbeatable price. I, I think that's exactly it. I went past the McDonald's advert the other day, and it was a very compelling advert and extremely yeah. nuanced, or not. All it said was it had a picture of a Big Mac, and it said, buy a Big Mac now. It was that classic call to action. Call to action, yeah. And it was such a simple thing. And, you know, i personally not a great, you know, I don't eat a lot of that stuff. You know, I'm a bit fatty with food. Yeah. But um, it was such a classic call to action, and I'm sure it worked. You know, Do you kids think driving up seeing with their mum saying, look, mm. there's a hamburger, come and mm. get one, mum, you know. Do you think that uh, we forget call to action in advertising and marketing? I really do. I, I think our copy is really 
overly sophisticated, and I don't mean you've got to be blunt and crude. I mm. think that people, uh, you talked about how you can't get you know, in this sort of attention deficit world we're facing yeah. now. We need good words. We need simple words that resonate. We need people giving us relevance. We don't need more clutter and more fuzz in our heads. We've got enough of that because yeah. we can't get through our emails every day. Yeah. We need well-written stuff that tells us what to do and tells us what it's about with a little bit of humor in the tail, you know, mm. a little mm. bit of sweet and sour, a little bit of a you know, challenge to our thinking. And that's what people need now, a little bit of interest, something that's amusing, but clear information, clear calls to actions that aren't patronizing. You know. yeah. That's it. why the humor works. All right, throw another one at me. Well, the other one, again, I think is this thing about um, Ab about our attention deficit. You know, we have this email, etc. I mean, how many of your emails do you get through every day? I, I get so many, I don't look at all of them. That's right. You just look at the headings. Perhaps yeah. I, I work on my cell phone. Yeah. I've got my phone 6 plus, 7 plus, and I can see the headings. I don't get to read them all. So how do you get through to people in this attention deficit world where the amount of information is cascading it's crazy. upwards? And frankly, your attention capability is probably going down because you're so saturated, uh, you're just tired to try mm, to understand. Mm. So now you've got to be clever in the way you engage people. You've actually got to help people manage information in their lives. And if you do that for them, you'll get the attention. Anything that stands out that's not too trivial, but is genuinely helpful, people resonate with. So now we're in a world where we've got to think not about how do I sell to my clients, but, but how do I honestly and truly help them? with their lives and and to filter the information so be you know be prudent with what you say be 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 express it well and use language is it less is more is nowadays hmm? is it is less more yeah it's 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 the difference between data information and intelligence you know there's an infinite amount of data around us so what people do is they they, they analyze it objectively and they mm. make it into sort of information and you get stacks of information and, and and, and Excel spreadsheets, and somebody will dump that on your desk and say, hey, look, boss, I've done my job. Well, you haven't got time to filter through that. Yeah. What, what it needs is that extra interpretation, that subjective interpretation, that filtering. <coughs> and the people who can really filter well and give you that one-page summary that's quite subjective, they're the ones you want to pay the extra money to. So those are the ones, those are the skills we have to teach people to have now. Not it's to funny, analyze, I, but to make sense. I worked for a listed CEO some years back and used to say, don't bring me 20 pages of rubbish. I want a one-page summary. If I can't understand it or from reading one page, I won't get it. That's right. So yeah. more and more, you've got to manage upwards. Now, don't be manipulate your boss. Mm. You've got to help and manage people to make sense of things. If you are too tired, lazy, or unable, or just can't be bothered to to provide that interpretation, then you're not really going to get recognition. Mm. It'll just be another, excuse my, excuse me, saying so, smart Alec who yeah. just wants to show how smart, they, clever they are with all these spreadsheets. If you're really clever, you'll make it simple, accessible, and relevant, so that people can understand it quickly and then act on it. I can't think. I think you can't emphasize that enough. The noise uh, mm. that we have on a daily basis. I mean, we we wake up and we switch on our phones and the app and bang and we're in, uh, and and we're 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 in the middle of everything <laughs> until we <laughs> shut our eyes. It's all flying around uh, around us, uh, and uh, emails. I mean, you're talking about emails. I went to check how many I've got. Do you want to know how many emails I got in my inbox? Tell me. 4,986. Right. And Goodness how many knows how many read? I've answered. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe mostly, half. Mostly yeah. all in bold and yeah. red, right. Yeah. So that's the life we're living. So let's be smart about how we engage mm. each other with information. And if you're the person who can make sense quickly, can connect with people and be helpful with your information, you're the one who will You'll be the star employee or the you person selling the product. Exactly right. You'll be number one. Have you got anything else for us? Well, I've got a yeah, minute yeah. or two. Yes, I have. I think... Um, I really think this is the time, and, and you know I'm an educationalist, so yes. I have to say this, but I really think this is the time that education will be taken seriously. I think we've been living in this sort of world of education that's been incrementally changing. We're not challenging the basic precepts of why we do it. What are we teaching kids at school and why? So kids need to be work ready, they need to be world ready, and they need to be work able to work in teams interactively and be internationally engaged. So what are we doing in our schools to provide those things? We're still teaching them same by things. rote, some of yeah. the same disciplines. Why are we so obsessed with the SAT scores and with the exam scores? When those exam, those exam scores are good for getting into university, 
but have been shown really to have relatively little relevance to what happens to people mm. in their lives. Mm. There's many, many more skills we need to be teaching our children to critically think, to but be kids creative. kids have been saying this for years. I mean, what am I going to do with convection currents when I grow up? <laughs> yes. What am I going to do with 11 years of Latin? Yes. Bizarrely enough, I yeah. did that. Oh, really? And it was one of the more useful things I ever did. My it goodness. taught me a lot, of, a lot about English language in the end. I watched a mini documentary the other day on the Finnish education system, which is mm. rated right up at the top. And uh, they only send kids to school in primary school for three to four hours a day. Uh, yes. uh, and the Finnish Minister of Education, uh, Michael Moore, w did this mm. documentary. And he says, well, you know, in America, we go to school, blah, 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 we do homework. And he says, we don't give our kids homework. And they let kids explore and breathe and be children. Mm. And it seems to work. Yeah, my, my my boy has just gone to Red Hill School, which is also I mean, I'm not trying to plug it, but it's just it's also quite progressive. I live across the road, by the way, and at lunchtime you can't get down Summit Street or Summit Road. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever get on a PTA, I'll, I'll, I'll raise a complaint. <laughs> no, make my own lane. Well, the Finnish system's brilliant. You know what they do? Yeah. They revere educationists. They pay teachers some of the best salaries nice. you're going to have. Nice. So open the colleges up, teach people to fantastic. that teaching is is a is an honourable and fantastic profession. Mm. Get the best. And then let people, let kids explore, trust their native intelligence. John, thank you. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. We hope this becomes a regular uh, chat. Thanks, Tom. Really John Foster Pedley, the Dean and Director of the Henley Business School Africa, the only international business school uh, to consider if you're looking for, well, your MBAs is your speciality. Yeah, yeah we do MBAs. But we yeah. do a lot of other accredited programs and customized programs. We, we, we say we're a, we're a design agency for learning. That's, what, that's how we see ourselves. Nice title. Uh, look out for them on the web. It's easy to find. Henley, H-E-N-L-E-Y. Business School is what you look for. Thank you, John, and a good day to you. Thanks, Tom. School is what you look for. Thank you.